Hey there, pal. How you doing? It's me, your friend. Well, we've known each other since like, what, grade five or something? Remember that time we had a sleepover and then I threw up in the middle of the night, but I didn't want to wake you up, so I just fell back to sleep in my pile of puke? <sighs> Good memories. Except no, that's all a lie. You don't know me, you never will. We don't live in the same city. You'll probably never meet me once in real life and I definitely would have never thrown up and gone back to sleep in my pile of puke. <sighs> Anyways, you ever heard of VeggieTales? No. It's this Christian animated children's show from the 90s, but that's not important right now. What is important is- I can't believe it's Christmas. I think I'm finally getting something. Can't believe it's Christmas. My favorite time of year. <clears throat> Anyways, the story of the toy that saved Christmas starts with George telling his asparagus granddaughter a story about Dinkletown. The town that- Didn't get Christmas? You mean they didn't have Christmas? No. What Uncle George was cryptically trying to convey here is that Dinkletown isn't Christian. <gasps> it's bad enough that Dinkletown's residents haven't been going to church on Sunday mornings. But what's even more concerning is how we're letting them get away with calling themselves a town. I mean, look at this place. It's barely more than a cul-de-sac. Dinkletown? More like Dinkle Sack, am I right? You know, but it's like a cul-de-sac. Funny joke, okay? Come on, just laugh, please. Anyway, after witnessing an incredibly captivating ad from Mr. Nazar, I mean Santa Claus, showing off the definitely safe for children, not at all a lawsuit waiting to happen, Buzzsaw Louie, the only toy with a fully functional buzzsaw built into its right arm. The children of Dinkletown are, understandably, up in arms. They will not rest until they get their buzzsaw loot. That's right, Buzzsaw Louie isn't spreading the word of God. He's twisting young, innocent minds into becoming complacent consumers under capitalism. And speaking of capitalism, it's time for a word from our sponsor. Hi there. If you're anything like me, you might have noticed that even though you're not buying anything more than before, you're still spending more money. Prices are going through the roof. For example, it cost me 76 bucks to buy this bottle of ketchup. And when I went back to the store today, they were selling them for $96. Well, have I got a solution for you. Rob a bank. It's easy. Anyone with a little confidence can do it. Please don't actually rob a bank. This is a joke and not to be taken seriously. Banks are not easy to rob and you shouldn't do it. I do not endorse robbing banks and neither should you. Welcome back. I hope you found that ad read enlightening and educational. In the time since you were last here, one of the Buzzsaw Louis gained sentience and immediately began questioning everything around him, as a Buzzsaw Louis with freshly gained sentience does. Grumpy kids, greedy dreams, this is not what Christmas means. I'm just a toy, I don't claim to be a genius, but there must be. After a harrowing escape from the toy factory, Buzzsaw Louie immediately plummets to his death. While the viewers are left wondering whether Buzzsaw Louie survived, the mood is lifted as we take a short break for a truly iconic silly song with Larry. If you're unfamiliar with VeggieTales, this is the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. These are honestly one of the best parts of any VeggieTales episode. I mean, the humor in VeggieTales is already fairly top-notch, but the silly songs allow the writers to focus solely on the humor while leaving the Bible stories on the side. 
I highly recommend you look this silly song up, maybe listen to a few others, they're all pretty damn great. I mean, this one's maybe a little repetitive, but it features a tax joke, which I love, especially in children's media, because kids don't have to pay taxes. They don't even have to follow the law. Who are you? I'm from the IRS, and I've come to attack your... Honestly, I think growing up with this may be part of the reason why I find taxes to be such a reliable punchline. What's funnier than taxes? At this point, we're about halfway through the toy that saved Christmas, and we are just now being introduced to our main protagonists, who are barreling down a hill on a sled at dangerous speeds, setting a great example for kids everywhere. Everyone is having a great time, except for Bob the Tomato, who, in typical tomato fashion, is being a little worrywart and just bringing everyone down. Um, aren't we going a little fast? Three? What three? Why? Why do I need to hang on? That was fun! I wouldn't do it again. You know, I really can't see anything from back here. Maybe Bob was right to be concerned, however, as the gang soon finds themselves headed towards a downed bridge, and Bob winds up headfirst in the snow, leading to one of my favorite lines to quote. Mousetrap. Huh? I wanted to play Mousetrap. You roll your dice, you move your mice. Nobody gets hurt. Nobody ever gets a reference, though. Not even my family, and I mean, they watch this with me every Christmas. Come on, guys! But seriously, Roll, roll your, your dice, dice, you move, move your, your mice, mice nobody, nobody gets, gets hurt. hurt. It's such a great line, how can I not use it? It's your fault for not getting it. But you know what, it makes sense that it took so long to get the story rolling, because once it is set in motion, there's really not a lot to it. The veggies find Buzzsaw Louie's cold and frozen corpse laying in the snow, and after pushing his nose, he pipes up to rebuke what he just said. You need more toys! Now that's the true meaning of Christmas! No, it isn't. With the gang now one member larger and curious to find out what Christmas is really about, they take Bob's advice and set off to go see someone who's really, really smart. And guess who that really, really smart person is? That's right, it's George self-inserting himself as the hero. Typical. What do you expect from an asparagus? Very quickly, they wind up at George's, who, always determined to be cryptic and slightly misleading, doesn't want to give the group a straight answer. In his words, But I didn't want to just give it to him, so I read him a story from a very old book. I wonder what that really old book was. Maybe the Epic of Gilgamesh? Alas, it's never specified, so we'll just have to live the rest of our lives never knowing for sure. Armed with this new information, the gang does what is really the only logical thing they could do. They break into Mr. Nezer's toy factory to create a new ad to spread the good word, proving definitively once and for all that it is okay to commit crimes as long as it's for the Lord. Now, I wouldn't say their ad was as compelling as the original, but hey, it had heart. And it ends with Mr. Nezer bursting in, cutting the broadcast, and presumably beating the absolute shit out of these poor helpless vegetables, who, sure, were breaking and entering, but they were breaking and entering for a good cause. So they've definitely got the people on their side now, and Mr. Nezer, he's probably gonna get cancelled. <laughs> of course, with this being a Christian animated children's short movie, Compassion wins out in the end. The public storms Mr. Nezer's factory and decide that he was just misunderstood. Of course he was. They gift him this teddy bear that apparently he always wanted. Pretty convenient how that worked out. Unfortunately, the bumbling Mr. Nezer accidentally launches the bobsled he'd tied the gang to, sending them on a quick trip to find out whether or not God is real. Now, Mr. Nezer had already lost my trust just being a pickle, but to willingly send a group of children to their death, I'm not sure he deserved to be given a second chance. I mean, sure, he does go after the group on a bobsled of his own, but even there he just makes more problems as the gang was actually able to save themselves, and then Buzzsaw Louie winds up having to risk his own life in order to save Mr. Nezer. They should have just let him fall. He was gonna let them fall just moments earlier. He didn't deserve to be saved. 
So I guess the moral of the story is, if you want to end corporate greed, gift all the billionaires a teddy bear, and don't buy into consumerism. Buy into Christianity instead. Goodbye.